here's where it gets interesting with our system. It's kind of the opposite sometimes, where the father needs the son to succeed because he didn't. The mother wants the daughter to fail because she didn't win. Teachers pay more attention to the children in the class who are lighter. And so you can, you can go in some school. Hold on, say that again. Teachers pay more attention to the children in their classroom unconsciously who are lighter. The darker kids get less attention. A white person can't give you $5 million, say, Dr. Umar, I've been a fan of you since 2012. I see what you got going on. Go get that school. White man. I'm talking about white as other white. I don't, I don't think I could take it. I can appreciate the BBL now. I can, and I'm gonna tell you why. It don't bounce. Nah, you talking about the cheap one, see? It's, you talking about the cheap BBL, Dr. Umar. And how you know it don't bounce, first of all? How the hell you know it don't bounce? I'm King Kong Kanye? I'm King Kong. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> Ladies, listen to me, sisters. Please don't do it. It looks Hold good. on now, we got a certain, oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. no. It we got two good. different. No. It look good in the clothes. And it might even look good out of the clothes, but it does not move organically. I have saw you with Suki, though. <laughs> right? So shout out to my sister Suki. Shout, shout out, out Six and Red. We gonna talk to all y'all. I'm talking yes. about all y'all. I saw you with Suki on. Yeah, sister Suki and I. We're Up there their podcast. podcast live show was like it was real cool the host he was asking a lot of like good questions for umar to like he was giving a lot of pushback for umar to give his more you know more what he had to say about the topics he had my experience of the it's up there live podcast show was amazing i came because i met loon next time you have a show i definitely will be in attendance and i was i have my own podcast so i'm definitely learning a lot from this man King is giving me gems every time I see him. Um, I really enjoyed the It's Up There podcast live show. Um, I learned a lot. The It's Up There live podcast show was amazing. It was a good time and always informational and uh, the perfect date night for a Friday night. I think the It's Up There live podcast was phenomenal. Definitely a platform that I am so glad to be a part of. It was definitely enlightening and motivating and empowering. Oh, it was awesome. I am so glad. I had so many other things going on tonight, but I made it an, uh, 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 important. It was very important for me. It was also important for me to bring my grandson to share with everybody I know. Disrespectful means turn up in my content. This is a show that I'm having. So we're this yeah, we're, we brothers. Yeah, we real tight. So this is right. So disrespectful means turn up in my show. And I shouldn't have stopped, but I want to address that. Continue. I'm sorry. I believe that I was sent here. Part of my mission is to raise the consciousness. And the voice is the greatest weapon to do that. I was never taught how to speak. In fourth grade. Black history class. There was an oratorical contest, North Philly. I'm from Bill Cosby's neighborhood. And I got into the public speaking contest. I won first place and I just never shut up. I was born to speak. I'm related to Frederick Douglass. He was a great orator. It runs in my family. It's, it's why I'm here. You follow? So my speaking is more of a ministry of black consciousness. It heals and it helps and it motivates and it transforms people. I believe that's part of why I'm here, but it's not the only reason I'm here because we've had great orators all throughout our history. But what we have to do is build institutions and leave a legacy. That's what we have to do. The speaking is good, but it's not gonna save us. 
The speaking is to get your attention so I can organize you for transformation. Okay, so do you, I, I, I believe again, man, I, I don't know if you, I think you know this. I think you just, you, you're in this, you, 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 you get into this spot. Yo, welcome back to It's Up There, the spot where every convo takes you to the heart of what's hot. Our podcast, man, it's blowing up. Got the fastest growing consumption rate in this content world. Check who's rolled through. We talking Lil Baby, Charlemagne the God, Wallow with that million dollars worth of game, Fred Taylor dropping gems on the pivot, Brandon Marshall from I Am Athlete. The list don't stop. Now just picture your brand shining bright among these legends. But I don't just take my word for it. Let's roll some clips. You're straight from our iconic guests talking about the vibe here on It's Up There. Dope right? But yo, there's even more. Our host, a regular on The Breakfast Club, known for selling out shows, is pushing conversations and engagement to new heights. That's the kind of spotlight your brand needs. Turning heads, sparking talks. Imagine this, your brand front and center, catching the eyes of hundreds of thousands of our loyal listeners every episode. This ain't just advertising. It's integrating your brand into their everyday life. Ready to level up? Hit us up at It's Up There, podcast, augmail.com for AD spots. This is more than a chance. It's your brand stepping into a new era. Now let's dive back into these deep talks. Stay locked in. Best is still to come. I, I, I believe again, man. I, I don't know if you. I think you know this. I think you just you, you're in this. You, you 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 get into this spot, right, where you uh, almost like you you get in character. Not that you're faking, but you get into this like spot where you just it's all about the mission it's all about it's, all, it's always about but i but i think i think your results when I'm eating, when see I'm in yeah shower. see playing into it see this is playing into it yeah 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 okay no. so yeah yeah this is playing into it talk to anybody who know me they'll tell you yeah no i'm i'm day. with you and i've been knowing you so yes. i know you want it it ain't it ain't that but i do i just not fake with me no nah, i but i do think that there's room to discuss that there's other things on your agenda that don't coincide with the mission like 100 again we went to that so i want i want to move past that let's talk about your content creation i was telling you backstage that you are one of the most visible people online mm -hmm. um what do you do to keep your content valuable and not oversaturated uh nothing until the conversation we had now you're giving me things i need to think about based on that conversation we had earlier backstage right. but until this point I never looked at my content as a means to monetization or, or, or money is purely to wake up our people, uh, purely to give them an alternative view. It's purely to let them know that they're not crazy when they see things that isn't making sense. So it's been, I never knew that I would be what I am on social media. I never heard, I didn't, I didn't even know what TikTok was. So people say, you need to get on TikTok because you all over it. Right. I didn't know. You know, um, I don't have a YouTube page. Right. So I didn't know social media would respond to me the way that it has, especially given my views, which many people would consider to be radical or controversial. So that was purely an act of God that I've been able to have that type of presence online standing for what I stand for. I never expected that in my wildest dreams. And you know what I find interesting? You came from a, a crop or a batch of conscious community where it was very strong. Mm -hmm. I said, Umar is probably one of the only ones that's been able to transcend that run. A lot of those guys kind of have faded away. You still yeah. see the Candace Owens, yeah. you still see you, and I believe that's about where it stops at. Yeah. What do you, I, I, what do you contribute that to? I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with my expertise as a school psychologist. It's kind of hard to separate my impact from my profession. Because if I was not a school psychologist, if I couldn't help parents help their children, if I couldn't mm. evaluate, if I couldn't diagnose, mm. if I couldn't teach them about the medications, if I couldn't help them with the IEPs, if I couldn't review the psychological evaluations, would I be as relevant? I don't know. That's... Some people would say yes. Some people would say no. It's no way to know because I've never not been the school psychologist, you see. And so I, I, it's hard to separate the two. Although I think presently, though, I, I definitely think Dr. Umar, the Pan-Africanist, is a much more popular person than Dr. Umar, the psychologist. But I think Dr. Umar, the psychologist, is more valuable in that parents clearly see 
in me someone who can help them. And you know what I think it is, and this is old fashioned for anybody in content creating, it's like literally add value, whatever you're doing. And so I think with the with you really having the background in understanding the medicines and understanding psychology, I think that value did set you apart because a lot of yeah. people was just talking. Yes. When you get with in no the meeting between yeah, yes. you get in the meat and potatoes and you really Understood. I remember you used to walk around with the big DS, yeah, uh, DSM five, DSM five yeah. book, and so these kind of things I think made you kind of reign supreme in yeah. regards to those those yeah. guys that laid there. It seemed like the talking just subsided. Yes, it just kind of went yes. away. Yes. Um. Have you? I mean, the documentary era was a boom for y'all. Do y'all you still get paid for any of those things? Nah, I've never produced my own documentary, and the ones that I was in. Uh, I never really made anything off of those. That's what I was talking to you, Bex, utilizing your own packaging for you because your brand is so big. Like everyone knows yeah. you're one of the most yeah. popular black people in the world, but it's the packaging. That's why people can come and package you and sell it. Yeah. Right? People can come and say, yo, I'm going to get Dr. Umar on my DVD and I'm going to go get a bag. Yeah. But Dr. Umar should be able to put that DVD together yeah. with, with yeah. that voice. And to your point, I definitely think I've lost out financially by being so giving. But at the same time, I would not do anything different because I don't think we get that school built if people didn't know my heart was real. Uh, I don't think I would be as popular as I am globally if people didn't know my heart was real. So I don't regret any of it. Uh, you know, even now people say, hey, you got to redirect your content on YouTube. You got about five different pages uh, misrepresenting themselves as you making money off of you. And we'll, we will get to that. But at the same time, that's how people came to know who I want by people posting the content. So so you got to lose a little bit to get a little. You got to lose. Yeah. Yes. You Just like Dion. Yes. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do. I don't, Let me do what he be doing. I don't. <laughs> no, nah, but but I don't know. It just wrapped back around to that. But but seriously, yeah. you you know you you have to lose a little bit to get a little bit. You were you were in content wars with a lot of guys. Yeah. What was that era like for you? Uh, I had a beef every year around Christmas. <laughs> it was always try to pay the YouTube bill. Try to get the YouTube check. That's what they. Were. I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my supporter said, "Stop responding," because if you notice, they always attack you around Christmas. So they can get their views up and get that Christmas money to buy they won't kids some white Jesus gifts. But <laughs> it was always, see, when I came into the conscious community, right? I came unexpectedly. I didn't know I was about to blow. I just blew. I didn't know nothing about it. I thought I would just be a psychologist for the rest of my life, doing my Pan-Africanism, but I never knew I would become this, right? So when I blew up, there were people who had their niches. You had people had the mental health niche, the uh, black consciousness niche, the Pan-African niche, the economics niche. And me, I do them all. So a lot of people felt like I was stepping on their toes, especially the younger guys. And so they would attack me every Christmas. And because I'm King Kong consciousness, I had to, you know, beat my chest a little bit <laughs> and let them know I'm from the hood, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, when do you stop that? Like, because for me right now, when I realized they were doing it on purpose to make money, it wasn't even genuine beef. It was strategic yeah, beef yeah. to get his response, to get his list. Yeah, so now I don't I don't even respond. because yeah. I know. Right. Now, here's the thing. When you have a legitimate issue with someone like you do sometimes uh -huh. when you speak on things that's really near and dear, like this is what I'm seeing. I'll, right or wrong, this is what I'm seeing. People can frame that in that way. So yeah. how do we keep it from, how do you keep it, how do you keep the authenticity of like, when I say something about Shannon, it ain't the same thing that they was doing to me, right? It ain't right. that that messy right. trying to steal the audience, trying to steal, right. get visibility, right. 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 clout chasing. It, it, it's very different. Cause like when we spoke about Deion Sanders, I made it clear. I respect him as a brother. He's one of my greatest football players. When we spoke about Shannon, I said, I think Shannon is a good brother, a marvelous human being. You know what I mean? So my thing is, I'm going to still big you up as my brother and just express my difference. Mm. When they came at me in a conscious community, they said he's a scammer. He's still in the fundraiser money. He's tricking it off in Europe, South Africa, Nigeria. You know, then they said I didn't have no degrees. 
right? Uh, uh, he him, made man. up all the degrees. He ain't related to Frederick Douglass. I mean, anything you can think of, they they were trying to assassinate my character completely. Mm. You know, so it's completely different. Do you do you? Is there a word the opponent out there not calling names, but right. I'm saying are there things for you to? Yeah, I will respond to that. Like. Uh, I mean, if somebody says something that I think needs to be clarified for my supporters and the school donors, then I'll clarify it, no matter where it comes from. That's the thing, because it's the brand recognition and awareness that they tamper with, yeah, right? Yeah. They tamper with what people know you for. And yeah. that's why I'm talking to you about this, because for me, um, being in the podcast space and moving so quick, I find myself in, in content wars, right? Yes, Where yes, people are yes. like, yo, you dudes ain't built nothing, ain't done no business. Yes, yes, and yes. I'm watching, as you say, I'm yes. watching these shots come and I'm saying, it's almost like I'm watching the authenticity melt. It's like, these dudes don't know me and they say, what is yes. what's happening? And I've came in and got rich from talking. Yes. So it's not something that's for debate. Yes, sir. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? And yes, I'm building sir. something, the conversations I have, people honestly enjoying this information base. Yes, sir. Today we kicking it, but it's information inside of every episode. I feel as though podcasts are almost like encyclopedias. You should be able to go and grab an episode at any moment and get something from that. I feel as though things are tra transitioning. All information will li live in some sort of audio form. Yes. Right. And so I try to I'm racing to that. But when I see myself in content wars with dudes who ain't built anything, but they brand tampering. So it's almost like it's like, damn, when do I when do I really just go or when do I just say this? Let's let them talk. Keep From building. my experience is best to let it go. You gain nothing by going to war with a smaller fish. You gain nothing by going to war with a smaller fish. And I had to learn that. What about a bigger fish? Cause I got big fish out there. I got big fish. I'm going at it. When I got, well, let me okay. let me re hold on, cause they'll take that and say I gave them props. So let me rephrase that. <laughs> I got people seasoned fish. Uh huh. I got seasoned fish that that's after me. See, even if you got a seasoned fish, if you look at it from the art of war, what will this cost you in the long run? Is what you got to look at, because that seasoned fish. I want to go back and forth with you all the time. And you're not looking for a long term right. beef. Yeah. But if you drop out too soon, it'll look like you caved to you're the pressure. Yeah. So you have to do a thorough analysis of how long they're going to draw this out, how deep they're going to go with it, and do I even want to entertain it at all? I used to look at your lives and say, I wonder, is he, I thought you was conscious. But see, the more I talk to you, I know that you don't know the money that's floating I don't. out there. I don't. And I'm sitting back there and telling you, like, yo, dude, you, you, you know, it's you got six, seven pages. They doing a million a day. Like this is thousands of dollars on People a daily stop basis. At the airport all the time and say you leaving too much money on it. Yeah, day. and so and so when I look at you, at first I thought I say, yo, these lives are like lost leaders for him. Almost like at Costco's, they 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 keep the hot dog one fifty, uh -huh. even though they losing on the hot dog. It's like I know when you come here, you are gonna get enough to want to see what's behind right. the curtain or in right. the rest of the store. And so at first I thought you were using those more like marketing, but when I talk uh, to you, like and it's, yeah, yeah, like teasers, like yo, this a little bit, come yeah. get it. Nah, oh, I never, yeah. I never, I never did it for the money, man. Like even now when I go live, I, I gotta feel it. My lives ain't even scheduled. Just like you know what, Eric and Mina caught our sister a blue monkey. Oh hell no, I was in Brussels, Belgium. I had to go live on that because that touched me. You know the. What is your thought about that? Let's talk about that. Uh, it speaks to the light skin supremacy complex that we still have in the black community. And by light skin supremacy, I don't mean light skin people, because you could be a dark skin, light skin supremacy. Just a little more right. A absolutely. Yes, yes. I know Father. dark skin, purple blacks who don't want nobody around them except yellow people. You see that. So you could be a light skin supremacist and not be light skin. So it's not about light skin people. That has nothing to do with it. It's a consciousness, you see. And I thought it was wrong. It was bad. I'm glad they fired her for it. She apologized, but the apology to me seemed a little bit disingenuous and almost like a, a smack itself. It was kind of, it was kind of a, I didn't like the apology. I, I don't think it was humble at all, but that's the issue. We got colorism. I think black women have it worse than black men within the queendom. So we as black men, we don't really look at each other's complexion when we hanging out. You feel me? We don't care, right. brother, brother. Right. But with the sisters, I've noticed, mm. sisters will look at the complexion of the women in their circle. You see? 
and, and, and the women in the circle who may not be the complexion they want can feel that get away from us energy. And that can be a dark skin circle or a light skin circle. Because even though light skin supremacy is more is more prevalent, you have dark skin supremacy who hate light skin people. Right. So it goes both ways, although there's more light skin supremacy than dark skin supremacy. And it's one of those evils, one of those psychological residuals from the plantation that I don't think we've really stepped on yet. And I don't think elders have really accepted the role they have played in the maintenance of skin color worship, because I still come across grandparents who make comments about dark skin. I've seen grandparents show favoritism, even in my own family, to the darkers versus the lighters or the lighters versus the darkers. I've seen it. You know, I've seen how aunts and uncles will favor the light skin and the dark skin. I see it in the public schools. And of course, the educational research shows us teachers pay more attention to the children in the class who are lighter. And so you could you could go in some school. Hold on. Say that again. Teachers pay more attention to the children in their classroom unconsciously who are lighter. The darker kids get less attention. There's been research done. And it has consistently. Wow. Yeah. You could go to, go to an emotional support class and go to the mentally gifted class. The emotional support class tends to be a few shades darker and the mentally gifted class tends to be a few shades lighter. Because guess what? If you dark, we're not even testing you for mentally gifted. It's a very strong, wow. and because most teachers in America are white women, that means when a black boy walks, dark skinned black boy, when he walk into the class, he's already been condemned from the start. Yeah. And I've, I've seen this. Yes. This is a real thing. Yes. The dark skin, nappy head yes. boy. Big no. Oh, yes. man, he go through hell. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I've seen this the is a real for, thing. Yes, yes yeah. The yeah. Only good for they sports. think he's, yes. Yes. He got to be a hell of a guy in sports. Yes. Or they going to say he's well, dangerous. He's, 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 he's done. He's, yeah, if you he's can't smart. catch this ball or shoot that shot, it's you're old. useless here. Wow. And that's, and that's why so many children go into sports, the black boys. It ain't because they necessarily want to be an athlete. This is the only way I'm going to survive or get recognized here because I'm clearly not wanted because of the way. And, and from the parents. A lot yeah. of times the sport thing drives the parent closer to you because yeah. it's like they're living through you in some yep. weird way yep. where they yep. want you to play. And you ain't saw your daddy. Your daddy yep. don't clock in about nothing. And I just spoke to a mother the other day who told me her son is only in sports and he's good. But he don't even like sports. This is the other day. My son is only in sports, Dr. Umar, because his father only pays attention to him through sports. You see that? So the father only showing up if it's a football game, that's basketball. It's yeah. the only way he can get his father's attention. And so a lot part. of black boys are going into sports because their father likes sports, and this is the only way they can hook their Right. And, and I wonder why, I mean... Why do you think black men do that? Like they live vicariously through their children in that way, like in the in the in the pathway, not just like I look you look like me, Junior. Right. Like they actually say, no, go do what I couldn't do. Yeah. Like what is some that of about? it is natural. It's natural, right? I own a business. I want my son to own one. It's natural, but but if my business it can become pathological, right? But my bit before you go because I get, know you're gonna smoke that. But my business, for it to even make it that far to be passed to my son, had to have been successful. So right. passing down right. something successful is one thing. Right. But to pass right. down my failure. Yeah, yeah. You know what and, I'm saying? And if you don't redeem me, Ooh. the child feels twice as bad because not only did I fail on the football field, my daddy needed me to win in order to salvage his self-esteem. So now the child feels twice as low because not only did I fail, my daddy needed me to win this so he could validate himself. Man, and, and they put so and much in it. to the marijuana smoke, mm. the blunts. You see that? Mm. I let my daddy, even though my daddy might be saying, son, don't worry about it. You gave it your best. I know. know. You needed this yeah. fit. Now I'm feeling less than. Wow. Now we both feel like we ain't. The, 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 Females, the women don't go through that, do they? Do they have a version of that? Like they have a version, but it's not as strong because the ego the mother of the man. model, maybe the mo model mother, maybe the dancing mother. I've seen the dancing mother, like where it, it's it's there, but it's there. It's not as strong because yeah, the that athlete the strong. Male, the male ego is stronger than the female, right? Mm. But here's where it gets interesting with our sister. It's kind of the opposite sometimes where the father needs the son to succeed because he didn't. 
the mother wants the daughter to fail because she didn't win. Mm. So, so stay have, like me. Stay like me. Mm. So I see a situation where the mothers are sabotaging the daughters mm. on purpose. They love them. They want them to do well. But they're having a difficult time accepting the fact that when this is all said and done, she would have exceeded me. Yeah. And, and that so and we, I think that's powerful. Oh, we got that's a deep, powerful. we got a deep seated yeah, mommy daughter. That's powerful. A deep seated mommy we daughter. We cooking Christ. now, Omar. Ooh, we cook. You got a deep seated mommy daughter. And I tell you one of the worst ones. Let's go back to the light skin supremacy. When the mother is of a lighter hue, and she values European standards of beauty. So she got the fine nose, the fine lips, the yellow skin, the, uh, the, the, the wavy hair. But the daughter has very strong African-centered features. And she knows that the mother believes beauty is in the way she looks. So by contraindication, I'm ugly. And then the mother never does anything. These is nonverbal. Non people to catch that. Nonverbal. That's just by just, indication. Just through the, it, the example, the Ooh, energy. Yes. By the standard that's put. She going out with her mom and her mom is all European up. That's Big it. nose, broadless, beautiful sister. Yeah. But she can't see her beauty. Right. Because she's judging herself by her mother's standards, which are European. Right. right. Tell you, I'm sorry about you that. See, yeah. I've seen a lot of girls' self-esteem get destroyed by their mother never validating their African-centered trait. And then the mother I've seen, and again, we, 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 we're not being critical, we're examining. Yes, because these are major issues. In yeah, the, and, and we, we have to speak about these. Yes. So, so when we did, I've seen, because cosmetic surgery is big, and we're going to speak Ooh. about that. But I've seen where the mother sometimes, because we dealt with the man's side, so I'm just trying to figure out where the women, where, if they're battling this and where it lies at. But I have seen where the mother would take herself through uh, around the to a cosmetic surgery mm. and by indicators that wears on the child as well. Oh my gosh. You know, yes. that's how I say, oh, mama thick. Yes. And so I ain't thick. I must not be, you know, kicking as high as she is or being, you know, as beautiful as she if is. If the mother is going to get surgery of any kind, whether it's the BBL, whether it's facial reconstruction, whatever it is, breasts, she got to have a conversation with her daughters about why. Because if she don't, the daughters are automatically going to assume. Get in line. Get in line. You were not comfortable with yourself. I'm your daughter. I looked exactly how you looked before you under. Because you don't even look like me no more. You when you go like get all that work and come back home, man, we used to look just alike. Which means what? It is a rejection. It is a rejection of your phenotype. And in rejecting your phenotype, you reject your children. Mm. Oh, is that Now, I, I do want to be clear to you, though. Go ahead. I, I can appreciate the BBL now. I can. And I'm going to tell you why. It don't bounce. Now, nah, you talking about the cheap one. See, it's, you talking about the cheap BBL, Dr. Umar. And how you know it don't bounce, first of all? How the hell you know it don't bounce? I'm King Kong, Kanye? I'm King Kong. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> Ladies, listen to me, sisters. Please don't do it. It looks Hold good. on now. We got it, a certain. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. no. It we got two good. different. No. It look good in the clothes. And it might even look good out of the clothes, but it does not move organically. A man can tell the difference. A man can tell the difference whether you fake in the front or fake in the back. We can tell the difference because the bounce ain't the same. Hey, listen. Bounce at all. It's the quality of the BBL you experience. So don't we're, we're dealing it. with a guy. Stay natural. We're dealing with a guy who has experienced a horrible BBL. So y'all are getting the side of the story that's not accurate. I'm explaining to you don't that. Don't do it, ladies. Listen, and and so I don't know where you pulled this one from, but I would say get get your get, get another shot at that, Umar. You're wrong about that. I'm all natural. You're all natural. Now. So oh, I have saw you with Suki though. <laughs> Right? So shout out to my sister Suki. Shout, shout out, out Six and Red. We gonna talk to all y'all. I'm talking yes. about all y'all. Yes. I saw you with Suki on. Yeah, sister Suki and I, we're, we're friends. Mm. Uh, we conversate on different topics. See, here's my thing. Here's my thing. As conscious as we are, 
we can't be so self-righteous that we can't go to where someone else is and try to move them from where they are to where we need them to be. I'm not the pastor who condemns everyone in the neighborhood and never get them to join the church. You see that? You have to meet them. She's a very influential woman. Yes. If one day she decided to come on over to the consciousness movement, everybody who follows her comes right on with her. And that's the day that I'm looking at. You see what I'm saying? So me, I communicate with anybody. And that's one of the strengths of Dr. Umar. They're not going to feel condemned, right? I'll get a brother with a white wife. He'll come over, Doc, I know you see what I got. <laughs> he said it like it's a bad sandwich or something. You know what I mean? You know you see what I ordered, bro. No, they, they say, you know, but, you know, can we still, have, of course, have a seat, my brother. Because guess what? If I cut him off, he'll never go back to a sister. But if I stay with him, I don't even have to talk about his white wife because I'm not going to disrespect her. She's still a human being. But by allowing him in my space, he's going to start reanalyzing that anyway. And then one day he comes back with a beautiful black queen. Doc, I, had, I couldn't do it no more. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I've noticed in my work through the years, just exposing people to what's right can lead to a change in behavior. I remember back in my Garvey days, right? And of course, I'm still a Garveyite. But back in North Philadelphia, we got Temple University down the street, University of Pennsylvania, Drexel. And the students would come to the Garvey meeting and they would say, Marcus Garvey said race first, put the race first. I can't do that. I love everybody. I said, it's not about not loving other people. It's about loving yourself first. Well, I can't do that. No problem. Just come to the study group. I didn't pressure them kids. And guess what? They slowly, one by one, started joining on their own. Just walk. I'm ready to sign up. I didn't do nothing. Just expose them to the truth. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I will meet with anybody. I will go anywhere. Just like Christ said in the Bible. I'm not comparing myself to Christ. Well, they say, you know, master, would you go into the house of a thief? And I, he say, I go anywhere when I'm invited. That's how Dr. Umar is. I'll go anywhere I'm invited because I know that when you are presented with the truth, your soul responds to it. And sooner or later, sooner or later, you're going to have to come around as well. Because we as African people, we are God's chosen people. And therefore, we are structured to, to uh, participate in righteousness no matter what. You see what I'm saying? So when somebody holds up that mirror of righteousness to you, Sooner or later, you're going to have to consider it because that's your nature anyway. You know what? And, you know, I, I think, like I say, man, you, you, you're great at this. You're definitely great at this. But we didn't get an answer about Suki. We talked about a lot. You took me around. The I court. told you we, we, we friends. We right, talk. right. But but OK, so because, see, we coming off the BBL conversation. Right. We're coming off how you are not interested in BBL whatsoever and i don't know if the sister has what i've never do. seen her that way I, we, I, right right but but again i'm telling you that the circumstances are the circumstances unknown or no mm -hmm. right and so by you being someone who is that strong about bbls right i asked you about suki i'm just telling you right, how, right. how we kind of uh -huh. got to uh -huh. her anyway because i don't want it to seem like it's just i never random. asked right i wouldn't Right. Okay. I don't okay. Think it's my place. Right yeah. now, but you've heard some of the things she's said about you, right? <laughs> yes. All right. So meeting someone with a BBL that said some of those things about you, meaning that she finds you attractive, uh, she, you know, certain things that she. So I'm saying the meetup. I mean, help me understand what's going on there. The meetups are professional and platonic. With a with a woman that calls you attractive, with a BBL. <laughs> professional and platonic. Okay, shout out. I'll leave it at that. Shout out to Suki. Shout out to Suki. With, 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 do you know Sexy Red? Familiar with Sexy Red? I've seen her recently. I never heard of her before. Ha, you familiar with her content? I've heard the kind of, I, 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 I've never heard her rap though. I haven't seen a video. That's some of the kind, and I got her coming on soon, so I don't okay. want to, you know, right, right, right. slander her at all. But you know, it's just, I was having that conversation about, about female rap and, and how, um, in my opinion, they're kind of mimicking what they saw the men do in gangster rap. I agree with you. I don't think that they're necessarily created this path. Oftentimes I see them uh, promote a lifestyle that they don't even adopt. Yes. And it's dangerous, but it's dangerous the same way the men done it. And I so agree. I believe the men really led those I women agree. into creating that kind of cause. I, I totally agree with you. But the men were never held accountable for it. 
Right. The women are being held. It's the double standard. Right. And the women, again, sometimes they get with these guys, right? And it's like, and this is why I try to give grace on the content, but I know it's effective in regards to it's programming minds. I know that, but I try to sometimes, because I always try to think, put myself in someone's shoes like I did with Dion. It's like, yo, see out of their lens, right? See out of a young girl like Sexy Red with two kids, two baby daddies, they both in jail, and I know how to rap. And I start rapping like this, and it start going. Do I turn that off when I have nothing to fall back on? Like, how many people will actually, at 24 years old, start getting 100,000 a show, 60,000 a show, and just turn that off. Even if I know I'm not necessarily adopting that lifestyle, but it's effective for the family. And I think so many of us live in that place. You do, we all, that's why I try to give grace, right? I don't exempt anyone, but I try to understand the route they're taking. That's why when I look at a Dion, it's like, ah, not a finished product. I think that we're on a journey and Colorado is just on that list of getting where I'm going. And the same with Sexy Red, it's like, you get in that position, turn this on and it works. I got children. What do I do? What do you, what, what would you say to a young girl that's rapping that kind of content? How does she get out of that? I don't think my message would be to the young girl rapping the content. I think my message would be to the black community that gave rise to the circumstances that put her in a position where she had to sing that content. I think one of the things we often miss when we talk about accountability, responsibility, is that we fail to recognize that everything we do takes place within a culture. It takes place within a community. And too often, because we are a disorganized, selfish group of people, we like to make individuals the scapegoat for a systemic problem. You see that? whether it's Sexy Red, whether it's Sister Suki Hana, whether it's the gangster rapper, everything takes place within a cultural context, right? So what, what, what situation was she born in? What situation were her parents born in? What did the black church do for her mother? What did the black politicians do for her mother? What did the black community organizers do for her mother? What can they do? Well, number one, if it wasn't for the economic desperation, a lot of our young people will be making better. Deals. That's what I'm saying. That's that's the point I'm making. Yeah. It's like, yo, this thing working. Yeah. And and, 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 and and she should have never had to go there. The reason she had to go there is she belongs to a community, the black community, that does not feel the need to use its disposable income to create financial opportunities for its young people. Go to the streets right now. Our young people are terrorizing our community. And it's our fault because we have not created any opportunities for them. You let me go to a school that miseducate me. I get special educated. I get medicated. I get juvenile adjudicated. I get incarcerated. Right. I get gang initiated. Right. I get raped. I get molested. I got put out on the street by my mom, whatever the case may be. And now all that pain that the community allowed me to feel. I'm going to give it back to the community. And now you got 11 year olds robbing 84 year olds at the ATM. That video that came out last week, it made me want to cry. He looked like he was nine years old robbing someone old enough to be his great grandmother. But when we allow our children to be raised by social media, when we allow our children to be raised by the television and not raising them ourselves. I mean, think about it. If you're a black child in Nashville, you're a black child in Chattanooga, you're a black child in Knoxville, Memphis, where can you go if you really need an adult to spend some time with you? There's nowhere to go. You can go to church but you got to swallow their doctrine before they value you first. Y'all see how that works? You're not important in this church until you swallow this doctrine. So where can a black child go in America if they need an adult to spend some time with them? You see that? But the pimp has spent some time with me. The drug dealer spent some time with me. They're going to use me and exploit me, but they're going to spend some time with me. We have turned our backs on our children. We have not raised them. We have not nurtured them. And now the black community is collecting the karmic debt that has come from our neglect of our children. Is, is Schools and jobs. Build our own schools for our children and create jobs for them. If we never do those two things, we never get our young people back. Is your school going to be credited in, in the state? Yes. Well, remember now, accreditation is voluntary. State law gives you the right to operate. So the state approves you to operate. If you want to get accredited, 
that's voluntary. The credited process speaks, doesn't that, isn't that what speaks to the workforce? No, not necessarily. Okay. Because you got to remember, you got children who are homeschooled to college. They've never been to a school at all. You see what I'm saying? A credit- Even in college, you can homeschool college? No, no, no. Homeschooled into college. In other words, my child is a- Same difference. Home. Okay, I see what see you're what saying. They've so never you been plug in the FDMG instead of the homeschool and it'll be like the same process. Absolutely. Okay, okay, okay. Except we're a real school versus a Right, homeschool. right, right. Homeschool is a decentralized form of education. It's not the equivalent of private school, charter school, public school. You see, it's homeschooling. It's more of an activity than an institution, you see. Uh. But it, accreditation is voluntary. So if I wanted to go to a Delaware State Accredita- Accreditation Bureau, I could have them come in, look at all our paperwork, curriculum, teaching, boom, 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 and they would decide if they want to accredit us or not. Now, for me as a Pan-Africanist, I would never do that because I don't need white people to tell me how to teach black kids. So I'll never be doing that, right? If the state required it, we would do it. You feel me? But I would not voluntarily go to white people and ask them, how well am I doing teaching black kids? How much of your money from fundraising do you, do you think came from white people? Any? Zero. Zero dollars. Yeah, there might have been a couple anonymous, anonymous white folks yeah. said the dollar or two, probably, right? But am I aware, am I consciously aware of receiving a, a, a donation from a white person? No. So, ooh, this is good. So, a white person can't give you $5 million, say, Dr. Umar, I've been a fan of you since 2012. I see what you got going on. Go get that school done, brother. White man. I'm talking about white and other white. I don't, I don't think I could take it. Okay, so the mission ain't that important then. No, it is. How, okay, how important is the mission when you can't take the money? Nothing, I didn't speak to any stipulations tied to it. I said, this will get your school up and running tomorrow. And, and you denied it. And the mistake you just made is you said a white person is going to give Dr. Umar $5 million with no stipulations. Yeah, what? Who in this auditorium believes that? No, listen. I'm to. How is that worth clapping? Them? White people don't give that kind of money without no stipulations, bro. They don't give that kind of. Uh, Omar, give, give the, honestly, let's talk about that. But what's that worth clapping about? Yes. All you said was, no, look. Yes. All you said, you look, look, and I like this, gonna play well on YouTube. But all you said was, all you said was, what the hell did you, Jay? It didn't even stick. What did no, you listen, listen. Here's the part what did you say? You're missing. That's what it was. You're missing. Yeah, okay, so listen. Well, I'm spirit. telling you. You're missing the spirit. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. White man give me five million. Right? I build the school with five million. Y'all come to the grand opening. Y'all going to be happy. Y'all going to celebrate. But when you go home in the back of your mind, you're still saying. White people did this for us again. Do you understand? Ain't nobody saying that. No, yes, yes. These people yes. lying. It speaks, it speaks Deep. to the spirit. Cause Ain't gotta, nobody, even if it speaks to the spirit. No, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Hear me out, good brother. It speaks to the spirit. You know why? 90% of all black institutions are financed or owned by white people. People don't even know that. Yes, we do. <laughs> most <laughs> people don't, most people, this crowd may, because okay. this is a college HBCU type. Yes. Most people don't even think of it like that. Right. So what I'm saying is, if the mission is more important than you, how you feel, how you think, what I, my e- emotions, uh-huh. then why isn't this money, even if they kill me about it, even if they, but this school get to go get up and running. I just don't understand that. Have you ever heard the statement, the journey is just as important as the destination? Yeah. How we get the school done is just as important as getting the school done. Let me ask you a question. How do I open up a school called Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy? Two black men who believed in self-determination, but I let a white man build the school for me. How do I tell the boys that you can do this on your own? You don't need white people. You don't need nobody but your own community. How can I say that? Do you truly believe that? Absolutely. Do you think that, that do you truly believe that it, it'll happen off the backs of only us? It already has. 
It's not open yet, so it hasn't well, happened. Yeah, well, it will be once we get the certificate of occupancy, but right. it already has. Yeah. So I'm saying, but so so you you've done this. You so this got to be the first school without white involvement, definitely in a hundred years since Marcus Garvey, and probably the first ever that was financed exclusively by the African diaspora. Every black community on earth donated to FDMG. When did you when did you globalize your 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 movement? Because it wasn't that way at first. No, I was always Pan-African, and so it was always global. It just, it just took a while for my message to get around to the country. I feel like you started at some point going super Pan-African. Like, I thought you no, was I'm always Pan-African conscious. Yeah, no, Yo, no, no, I'm saying I, I ain't speaking about in your spirit. I'm speaking about in your communication. No, the message was always Pan-African. It was always, always so Pan-African. even on those DVDs. Yes. Now, every time I see you talk, I hear Pan-African. The always from the beginning. okay, so I must have yeah, missed that. Yeah, it seemed well, like after they started to evolve, nah, into, nah, it, it, it been pan African. This is something I've always wanted to ask you where do you get this from? And I'm gonna do a quick Dr. Umar impression, all right? <laughs> and I want you to tell me where you got this from. Um, so you will be on live, right? Say Dr. Umar's on live, and you'll be like, uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. You know, today we will make sure that we get. Everything we need to get done. Good morning today, brothers and sisters. Good morning today, brothers and sisters. Good morning today, brothers. You'll give them four or five of them, three of them. Okay, what is that? Is that you thinking? Is that you? What is that? I do that. Because I've, I've adopted that. I want you to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah effective. Yeah. It's effective. The brain is the creature of repetition. Yes. Not truth. Repetition. Yes. Right. Program. Well, I say it three times. The, the the points I really want them to get, I repeat it three times because repetition is how you condition the unconscious. So once to understand, a second time to understand, and the third time to overstand. I knew it was a. I knew that wasn't you yeah. stumbling. I knew it was something there. Yeah. Because I'm like, yo, he just re- nah. I know him, and we speak, and we don't really have to. So I'm saying when you do that, I said, oh, it's technique. There's something yeah. there. Yeah. Who did you study in regards to speaking? Because speaking is such a talent that people don't really understand. They don't even know how hard this is for us to just be doing yeah. it. Uh, Who did you study? I never really studied anyone. I guess indirectly, Garvey and Douglas would be the main two, obviously. Uh, but most of our leaders were great orators, you know, so... I've listened to all of them, but I never patterned myself after anyone or 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 anything like that. You know what I mean? It just came natural. You took nothing from any you you uh, took technique. You ain't took no technique from no one. If there was any technique. Cause see, you got the you got the pointing, you got you bro, I'm high level. Listen, I'm this how I make money. So I'm high level examining speakers, right? right the right. pointing, the everything. I'm watching it all. So I'm saying, this is a developed thing. This isn't uh huh something you can walk off the porch with. So I wonder, I, I think some of us are born with it though. I, I, I think some of us are born with it. I think for, I think the great ones like Garvey, Douglas, Dr. King, you can't teach that. Dr. You can nurture it, I ain't saying you teach it. it. And that's what I mean, like you can't teach it. I'm yeah. not saying teach it. Right. Cause teaching but you will can speak. teach people how to speak though. Yes, but not on this level. Right, So right, I'm right, saying right, right, when, right, right, when, I'm, when I'm peeping right. what you're doing, right. Understand I've already identified that I'm trying, I'm watching the best speakers in the world because this is how I make yes, my sir. money, right? So I ain't even talking about the rest of those guys. I'm saying the highest level of communication, mm-hmm. right? You, the, the Farrakhan's, the people that I look in and say, oh, all right, I, let's let, let, pull a notepad out, get some of that technique because there's there's breath control, there's pausing, there's repeating, there's, there's face you know, there's so much that's happening. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm wondering who deposited the, anything. The, the the only technique that I'm conscious of having borrowed from my predecessors is the need to pause yes. occasionally. Yes. So important. Like, I'll just go. Yeah. And I won't stop. So I consciously try to yes. remember to pause. Yes. And that's probably more of a Frederick Douglass thing yes. than anything else. And because people have to take it in. They even with me, up. like... See, because even with me, when you try to get into that vibe, yeah. you know, it's like, I right, at some point, I got to start talking to you like you listening. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. some people, they just talking. You got to talk to somebody like they're listening. Yes. You know, yes. and sometimes yes. when I need emphasis on something, I need to lay there for that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, even in our communication today, you would say something like, 
uh, for your black liberation and you'll just let that live. Mm -hmm. And I think those techniques, I just want you to know that people are watching those things and you're, you're pouring into people indirectly just by, you, you, you know, spiritually, right? There's about five different major spiritual gifts. You have your clear cognizance. That's when information from the universe is downloaded automatically into your mind. You know it, but you don't know where you learned it. That's clear cognizance. When I speak, not all the time, but sometimes, clear cognizance will take over. And I'm saying things about things I've never learned nowhere. So it's coming directly from the ancestors. And I'll go back and look at a clip and say, how did I say that? And I didn't even know that. Yeah. So... There's sometimes you get into a zone yeah. where it's not even you. Oh man, I love those zones. You, you, you that's oh the man, them zones there. When yeah. I if I can get in a pocket on yeah. these boys, yeah. it's nothing like it. That's man. what I'm saying. It's not all the time. You no, know when it's coming. And it's magic. And yeah. you feel it as a speaker, as yeah. someone yeah. you say. And you know when you're with Yeah, I got in my bag. Like, I'm not now. stopping. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. take a break. We ain't taking no break. Oh, no, we can't. The ancestors. Yeah, 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 going, yeah, 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 yeah. And the yeah. one thing I learned about public speaking. Public speaking taught me more than anything else. We have no control over the outcome. Because I walk into a certain lecture, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tear this up the nice and right sound, right building, right this. It'll be a regular lecture. And then I'll go somewhere where I'm like, okay, this is just gonna be a regular little talk. It's my classics. All of my classics were unintentional. Mm. Every one, mm. the ones that people love, I'm like, damn. I never even thought that night was going to yeah. be that special. And it's never up to us. Yeah, and this is important for the young content creators because they're watching us. But here's the thing, too. Um, as I'm going further and further, I just did Invest Fest with 20,000 people, right? And so when you come out and it's, and it's that many people, you look around like, what is this, right? And it's like you blow a circuit or you blow a fuse. You get it back. But for a brief second, it's almost like, what? Like June, yeah. it's like everything you was thinking, your thought process, but it eventually comes. It, it eventually comes back. Do you find yourself um, ever being in that mode? Because you speak so much now, I don't think you you may you may find yourself well, in. For it. me, the best speech is the first time they saw you, because there's no expectation. You feel me? If I'm going like uh, I'm going to Cameroon, Africa next week, right? I was in Brussels, Belgium last week. I never been to Brussels. So there's no pressure because I know they know me from social media, but they never felt me in the person. Right. This is no pressure. Right. You know what the pressure is? When I've been in Nashville 10 times and y'all came back to see me that 11th, that's pressure because y'all know what to expect. Y'all seen it. And I got to give y'all a new fresh message and be even more dynamic I was the previous nine times. Yeah. So some people would say the more you come back to a city, the easier. Not for me. It's the harder. Yeah. You feel me? Like a place like Chicago where yeah. I spend a lot, New York where I spend a lot, it's pressure. Yeah. Because not only do I got to have a new message, I got to grab you every time better than I did the last time. And, and what I'm trying to do, right, because I'm ascending so fast. So I'm trying to figure out when now I'm conscious about this as, as I'm getting because it's so much money on the line. And anybody watching me, I got millions of people watch. I need y'all to know this. Pay attention to whatever you're doing. Right now, man, I'm finding myself trying to understand when I get those zones, I literally try to backtrack what that day was. Like, did I place myself there? Was it something I done before the show? Was it, nah. even though I know it's probably not because it never yeah. reenacts itself. Yeah. But it's like, I'm conscious on trying to grab that or create that environment mm -hmm. that puts me, have you found anything like that for you? That something that puts you into a place where, like me, I went back the other day and, and I'm give you a second. Before you came, I'm like, I'm trying to fish what what is that that gets my brain like because sometimes dude my brain will go and it's like i'm on another yeah it's another yeah. frequency yeah you know what i'm saying so i wanted to ask you you know i believe when you get to a certain level within your spiritual development myself included you'll be able to activate it at will mm. the reason we can't activate it at will yet we not at that frequency yeah. yet yeah you follow what i'm saying yeah 
when you get to that frequency, you'll be able to activate it at will. That zone. Yeah. It's the athlete, too, where they shoot a shot and can't miss. Right, right for five minutes, yeah. I can't miss. Yeah, I'm on. They in that zone. Yes. You went to a high, you went into your super conscious mind. Yes. Right? But we have to get there through the spiritual. Door. Is there anything that gets you there? Like, I've seen you. Is there anybody that maybe they argue with you and they play? Who is it? He, or they insult your intelligence or they. Not because it's all based on divine timing. It is. Right. So from an African perspective, we exist in two worlds. We exist in the physical and we exist in the spiritual at the same time. We can't see what's happening in the spiritual. It could have been within the spiritual design for this day. For you to access right. your God consciousness right. for that. You follow right. what I'm saying? Right. Right. Because right. remember, we got our own plans. Our ancestors got a plan too. Right. And then God got a plan too. Right. So we think that when we wake up, we're just living our life as we want. No. Your ancestors got a hand in it because you are a reincarnation of them. And then the most high, the universe has a design of its own. And this is why when you hear like Dr. King say, I want to do God's will, you got to tap into that. You got to tap into that. The highest form of expression is when what you want is the exact same thing God wants you to have. That's divine consciousness, and that's the purpose of life. And that's why I think that we as black people never get to where we're supposed to be, brothers and sisters, until we divorce ourselves from all of this European materialism that we swallowed up because we have become more materialistic than the Caucasian. We are literally worshiping money. And there's no... Why would God... Help us get free. Really help us take back over the world as we once ran it. If all we're going to do is replicate European culture. Does that make any sense to you? God is not going to help you. Why would he get rid of the white man so the black man can replicate the white man? You have to go back to being who you are. And when you go back to being who you are, that's when Supreme Consciousness will come and say, okay, my children, you ready. Let me put you back on the throne. We do not go back on the throne. We do not until we recover our African mind. This is what we do on this side. So I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for watching. Now my analytics tell me that a high percentage of you guys that's watching this video is not subscribed. So I'm gonna ask you to do me that favor and subscribe to this YouTube channel, share and like. Um, and if you wanna see part three before everybody else, you come to Patreon. We also go live on Patreon. You also can join my Discord. Um, when I go live on Patreon, what I do is I interact with the audience. They're going to get an opportunity to come up, speak with us in front of the audience, um, whether that's heated, whether it's love, whatever it might be. But these opportunities are only on Patreon. So join Patreon.com and set their podcast. Join our Discord. Talk to them. When I go live, I play games. Like right now, I'm playing uh, UFC. And I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Part three, we get into Dr. Umar and Farrakhan. I felt that it was time for a conversation with Dr. Umar Johnson about the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, if he believes he speaks better than him, um, if he got anything from him, how he feels about him. Um, we also sp spoke about fundraising. There's been a lot of conversation surrounding crowdfunding. Dr. Umar was probably one of the first ones um, that 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 took that leap of faith as it pertains to crowdfunding. So we had a very, very, very interesting conversation about that. And that'll be coming for this part three live debate. Dr. Umar Johnson, Big Loon, live from TSU. Um, again, man, just enjoyed it. Just enjoyed it. Hope you did too. Right? Thank you. Have a good day. Peace.